my name is Linda Warren. I'm the Assistant Music Director at First Unitarian Society in Madison. And this is another concert in our series of, it isn't a new musicale, but it's at noon and it's on Friday, so it kind of is. Um, I'm so grateful to Drew Collins, the Music Director here, for hosting this and making sure the technology is working and for really even having the idea in the first place when we had to shut down the musicale program whereby we had live audiences. So happy to share some music with you today. A lot of today's music was composed by other harpists because just tell the truth, for harpists that can be the most fun thing to play. Um, we really enjoy it. So this first piece is by a harpist named Henriette Regnier. She lived from 1875 to 1956 uh, in France and was very famous in the early part of the 20th century as one of the few women touring as a classical concert artist. This is a short piece she wrote called Esquisse, uh, a French title which means sketch in English. Next, a couple of pieces by another French harpist, Marcel Tournier, living at approximately the same time as Regnier, from 1879 to 1951. Uh, he wrote a little set of four preludes in 1917, and this is number one and number three from that set. First is marked tranquille, which means in English calm or serene and second marked lento, which just means simply slow.
say that harpists spend half their time tuning and the other half the time playing out of tune, but I, I don't think that's true. All right, uh, next, Mr. Norman Della Gioio, not a harpist, but much beloved by harpists for even just this one piece, Bagatelles for Harp, written in 1969. He's an American composer who lived in the northeast part of the United States from 1913 until 2008. And I'll play uh, Bagatelles number one and three. First is Andante Affettuoso, and last is Adagiato Calmo.
back to a composer who was also a harpist and a living harpist. Bernard André is a French harpist and very active composer uh, with student pieces and professional pieces, uh, just all of them wonderful. The next is uh, two selections from his Autumn Dances, written in 1990, and they simply have a uh, Tempo markings, adagietto and larghetto. Thank you. 
Most of the harpists who live in Wisconsin are very familiar with Kim Robertson. Um, she lives in Milwaukee and tours and travels all over the world giving lessons, classes, concerts, workshops. Um, she's just fabulous in every way. We all wish we could be her when we grow up. And this is a, an original piece of hers. She often plays her own arrangements of Celtic music, uh, but I am especially drawn to this because of its title, Gratitude. Next, we move to a harpist from the British Isles, the United Kingdom. Her name is Skyla Kanga, um, living harpist um, who is very active as a teacher performer and also, as you'll see, as a composer. This is one of my favorite Celtic tunes called The Lark in the Clear Air. And uh, I have often played Laura Zarr's arrangement of this piece, which is very simple and spare and uh, a beautiful arrangement because of that. This one is a little more complex and moves through a lot of different harmonies and so I enjoy that too.
and more music from harpists. This by Harper Tosh. He is a, a lovely gentleman living in Seattle, um, been performing and composing for many years. Um, fabulous harpist. And when I was going through music to pick pieces for this program, I this caught my eye. Harper writes, every few weeks I completely empty my schedule and spend an entire day alone, walking, reading, writing, playing harp, following the cat around, whatever. Though these solitude, solitude days can sometimes be a bit melancholy, they are always a great source of inspiration and peace. So I think since we are all living in solitude days right now, that this is the perfect piece for that. Thank you. 
Currently, every concert at First Unitarian must have music by Laura Zarr, so here we go. First is uh, a present from my brother, who will be one of the few people who understand this title, Mackenzie Waltz. The Mackenzie River is in Oregon, and uh, Laura lives in Oregon, in Corvallis, Oregon, and the Mackenzie River does waltz, so this is a gift for you, Kenny. And finally, from her season suite, the uh, ever-challenging piece called Nimbus, which in order to play it really well, I really could use an extra hand, like three hands for, you know, someone else doing the right hand, and I'll play the left hand with two hands, or I don't know what. But anyway, Laura Zarr is one of my favorite people and one of my favorite composers, so two pieces by Laura, Mackenzie Waltz and Nimbus.
Thanks to everyone for listening, if you made it this far. And uh, thank you again very much to Drew Collins, who runs the sound and the live stream and the archiving and puts up the programs and really makes us all happen. It's, it's, uh, it's due to him that we are able to do this. So thank you, Drew. And next week will be a special treat for me because I get to work with two of my favorite singers the Children and Youth Choir Director here at First Unitarian Society, soprano Heather Thorpe, will be joined by Four Seasons alum and also a FUS member, Tamara Brognano. And the two of them are singing songs which I picked out, which means, oh, they're my favorites, um, but they're songs that they have done in services before, since we can't really get together to rehearse very well. Um, but very excited about that program. So please tune in, uh, Heather and Tamara and Linda, next week. And I'm happy to say that uh, when we heard that the lockdown is continuing until the end of May, so are our concerts. So every Friday, all of April and all of May, we will be here um, with music, which we hope will bring some joy to your soul and possibly some comfort and um, make you smile and also give you some peace. That is our intention. Thank you again and hope to see you next week.